In today's video, we'll be starting a new series where we recreate designs and features from popular websites. And the first website we'll be working with is Stripe's homepage. There's a lot of very interesting design elements throughout the page, but for today, we'll only be focusing on the header's background. More specifically, we'll be looking at recreating the three color gradient, the slant or angle at the bottom, and these colored stripes that you see in the top left, the middle right, and the bottom left. So before we get started, I already have a blade file that we can use for our Stripe homepage and I have a header.scss file where I've put all of the colors we'll be using throughout the design as variables. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a header component and we'll put a div with an ID of stripes inside of it like this. Back to our headers file, we'll do a stripes selector and we'll give it a height of 760 pixels. Next, we'll give it a background and we'll use linear gradient here. And if we go back to the Stripe website, you can see that we have this purple color, this cyan color, and then this green color. So we'll do that right now. So right here, we'll do uh, purple and we'll give it a position of 15% and I will explain what that means in just a second. Next, we have cyan and the position is 70%. And the third one is green with a position of 94% just like this. So back to the browser and we go here and we refresh. You can see that we have our gradient. So purple 15% means that from 0%, which is the top of the div, to about 15% down, the color is gonna be purple. Then at 70%, we're gonna hit that cyan color and in between the 15% and the 70%, we're gonna have a gradient from purple to cyan. And then the same thing, at 94%, we're gonna have this green color and then the gradient from cyan to green from 70% to 94%, and from 94% to the bottom of the div, we're gonna have this green color. So hopefully that makes sense. Next, if we go back to the Stripe website, you can see that their gradient is not running from top to bottom like ours, it's actually running from the top left to the bottom right. So let's go back to the editor, and as a first parameter to linear gradient, you can pass in an angle. So we'll do 150 degree, and we'll save, and we'll go back to our website and refresh. And as you can see, we now have the same angle. So back to the Stripe website, we'll next be working on that slant at the bottom or this angle. So back to the editor here, we'll use the transform property and we'll use this QY with a minus 12 degree uh, angle. So if we save and we go back to the browser like this, you can see that we now have this angle. However, we also have this white gap at the top. So to fix this, we'll change the anchor point of our transform property and we'll set it to the top left of the div. So back to the editor here, we'll do transform origin and set that to zero. If we save and we go back and we refresh, you can see that we got rid of the white gap at the top. If you want to better understand what SKUY does, we'll go ahead here and create a header selector and we'll give that a padding of 300 pixels like this and we'll save and if we go back and we refresh, you can see what's going on here. So basically it's turning our square div into this parallelogram shape instead. So back to the code editor, we'll get rid of this and we'll go back to the Stripe website and the next thing we'll be working on are those colored blocks that you can see here and here and then at the top. So in the code editor, we'll open the blade file and we'll create a five span inside of the stripes just like this. And next we'll start styling them. So we'll do span and the position is going to be absolute. So that means we need to give the parent a position of relative like this. We'll give them a height of 190 pixels and we'll give them a width of about one third of the container. Next, we'll start styling the first block. So we'll do nth child one like this. And if you're not familiar with the nth child selector, basically it means we have a parent and then we have five children and the nth child one is this one. And this is the second, third, fourth, and fifth one. So back here, we'll give this one a background of purple. We'll give it a top of zero pixels, so it's aligned to the top of the div. And we'll give it a left of minus half of its width, like this percent. So if we save and we go back here and we refresh, you can see that we have this uh, div at the top left. And actually, maybe you can't see it, but I can tell you that it's there if we do inspect. And we look at the first one, you can see the shape right now. Okay, so next we'll style the second one and we'll do nth child two. And this one's gonna have a background of blue one and it's gonna have a top of zero pixels as well. And it's going to have a left of about 16%. So it's right next to the first one. So if we go here and we refresh, you can see that we have the first one here and then we have the second one right here. 
So next we'll go back to the editor and we'll create the third one. So we'll do um, nth child three and it's gonna have a background of blue two. It's gonna have a top of zero pixel as well. And it's gonna have a left of about 49% like this. So once again, it's going to be right next to the second block. So if we refresh, you can see that we have our three blocks like this. So we'll style the fourth one now. So we'll do nth child four, and it's gonna have a background of turquoise like this, and it's going to have a top of 380 pixels, and it's gonna be on the right side, so we'll do right and minus 16% about, so that's half of its width once again, and we save, go back to the browser and we refresh, and you can see that we have this block right here to the right. So we only have one block left to do, so we'll do nth child five, and we'll give it a background of blue three, and a bottom of zero pixels, so it's gonna be at the bottom left. So if we refresh here, you can see that we have this block right here. Now if we compare back and forth with the Stripe website, you can see that we have the exact same header background. So this will conclude today's video, and in the next one, we'll be looking at some more uh, design elements on the Stripe homepage. So in the meantime, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss the next episode.